So I'm out at the uh, tool shed slash outhouse and uh, something I've been meaning to do for a couple of years since we built it and never got around to was adding these support pieces here. Um, Kind of see it's at an angle it's only probably about five degrees three degrees somewhere on there there's also a front to back angle and uh, on the back ones it was starting to shift so uh, took some pressure treated four by fours got 45s for the front ones and we're doing these outside ones uh, at right up to the outside post then using those ledge mates on the outside edge over here um, and stiffens up the building huge. But the uh, main thing is it should keep it from shifting down the hill. So it was starting to, the building was still square level, but the posts were, were shifting underneath it. So um, we got one left to do. We got all the other four corners done. And uh, after that, we're going to mess with the tractor for a bit. But uh, yeah, I should have done this right off the bat. Would have been a heck of a lot easier than, than jacking it up with the bottle jack now. But uh, live and learn. I'll video it after we're done. Okay, we're all done. So you can see the extra uh, supports we put underneath there. We also added the cross piece in between the two posts. Um, and then front to back. Let me see if I can show it from this side over here. From the front, you can see it. So, it should be uh, solid. Um, like I said, it was just on the back end. It was probably a three or five degree lean on the post. And uh, we straightened the post out, jacking it up in the air, putting some cribbing underneath to support the load. And then um, put the 45s in and the outside supports uh, and then added that extra piece which we probably don't need but yeah it's not going to hurt anything so might as well put it in there. Um, I had some people ask uh, more details on the shed. I have some older videos and I'll put a link to them in and I have no idea if you can hear me. The wind's kind of going right now but uh, yeah, the shed is eight. The, the main room inside the shed is eight feet by eight feet. And then we have a four-foot porch, so that way we can stay underneath the requirements to get a permit. Um, and we cleaned out some of the stuff that we put into the barn storage. Um, let me shut the door. Someone asked about the light. Lights on. It's kind of hard to tell during the daytime how much it's actually uh, doing. Um, at nighttime, it, it does does help, but it's not a super bright light. It's more like a a helper. But yeah, you can you can see what you need to see out here. Um, there's the beam where it's focused right now. It's flickering for some reason, and. Uh, We'll see if it keeps on doing it. If it does, I'll take it apart and check the solder joints inside. This Harbor Freight, they're not exceptionally expensive. So a lot of times you have to re-solder some, uh, some of their solder joints. But uh, let me open it back up for light. And I'll turn it off. There's no reason to have it on more right here. But basically it's uh, we framed the three back walls the same height when we built this and then built a taller front wall that supports the roof load and the side boards are just tucked underneath an extra 2 by 6 on the top um, and we didn't even cut them even on the top from the outside they look good um, we do got one that's a nice crack uh, I'm just going to fill the crack with some putty but we get most of this wood green, so to have one board crack isn't too bad. Um, but like I said, it's about 8x8, eight eight and um, 
We got a four foot front porch. We're gonna add some 45s to the top posts next. Um, just to stiffen everything up one step not further. Um, and now I'm gonna go play with the tractors for a bit. Uh, I'll link to the uh, videos where we built this. Um, it was about two years ago now. And uh, um, I, it, it, that goes into a lot more detail, I think. I, I haven't looked at them in a while, so. But uh, I'll, I'll post a link to that. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna go play with the tractor right now. Split the clutch, split the tractor, to replace the clutch. Um, but uh, it looks like it's just an adjustment issue. We're getting it better now. It hardly grinds at all now. And he's able to stop, put it in neutral, let it roll, so the gears don't line up anymore. And clutch it, and it changes gears for the most part pretty smoothly. When you get these old tractors, they always seem to have something they got to work on. Um, on the back end, I still need to uh, get the leveler replaced, and that's a hard part to find, it seems. Um, you see how that drawbar isn't sitting level. It's down on the right because the uh, adjustment piece isn't... Uh, doesn't, doesn't work anymore. But we're able to change gears now without grinding, which is awesome. Because it made it a, a pain in the neck to work with. You kind of had to, your shifting had to be much smoother than you'd like. Yeah, so we adjusted the clevis underneath, and we brought it the opposite way that I thought. I moved it one way, and that didn't help at all. And then we uh, tried it the other direction, and initially we had about six inches of play. So we brought it back so that uh, there's probably still a little bit too much play in there. And we can probably bring it down, because that's probably two inches. It's supposed to be about... An, a little bit over an inch and a half, but it works. So, some other things we have to get done in this tractor are we got a leak from power steering hose, so I'm gonna have to pull that off, see if it's just a loose fitting or not. Um, like I said, the adjustment piece here is junk, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. Not sure what yet. Um, but uh, we'll figure something out. What I might do is just get a pin like on this side and then get a generic adjuster. Um, I like to get some of the gauges working again. <laughs> um, but that's not really critical. It doesn't overheat, at least it doesn't seem to. Um, but it'd be nice to, to be able to have the gauges working again. But other than that, it always starts up nicely. 
Um, last year we replaced the coil, which I don't think we actually needed to, but you know, it's done and now we don't have to worry about it again. Um, and yeah, that's plenty. This tractor will be, will be good to go. We need to fine tune our attachment setup a bit because we. I'd love to find a different three point hitch system. This here is a pain in the neck. Um, there's an auto company that makes one. I might not do it, but yeah, that's on our, 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 our want, not must have list. So, yeah. So we got the uh, tool shed shored up. We got this taken care of. And I think we're gonna go remove some stairs, or a ramp from my father-in-law's shed so we can replace it with some pressure treated because it's all rotted out. Oh, we cleaned out the garage, put some of the stuff upstairs so we have more room in the tool shed. A good day. It's gorgeous out today. Oh, and then, and then my uh, last week, uh, my cousin came out and they planted the field out there, which you probably can't see too much, but we have clover planted and uh, we got rain yesterday um, and we'll see some rain this week, so that'll be good. We'll see how that comes up. Um, you know, if we could get uh, the entire month of June, like today, it would be awesome. We get a ton done. It's gorgeous out. Not humid, not hot, and not humid is a big deal around here. It's always humid. So, I think that's it for today, though. Thanks for watching.